I've been directly involved in the launch of over a dozen multi-site campuses through the churches I've led, and half of them have been in movie theaters. I'm convinced that every church leader should consider using a theater for your next campus or church plant. They're flexible, culturally relevant locations, typically in the center of the community that you're trying to reach. Regal is the only theater company with a dedicated team of full-time consultants ready to help your church launch and succeed in a movie theater. Check out Regal Theater church.com for more information on locations your church could use welcome to the unseminary podcast are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further faster have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world hey you're not alone join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary buckle up and let's get started with this week's unseminary podcast well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. So glad that you've decided to spend some time with us today to pop us in your earbuds and, and listen in. Uh, I've been looking forward to this interview for a while today. It's our honor to have Tony Morgan on uh, the show. Tony has been a part of the senior leadership team of a bunch of great churches, Granger, New Spring, Westridge. Uh, but he's currently the uh, the lead strategist and the founder of the Unstuck Group. If you don't know who Tony is, you've probably been living under a rock. Uh, so I am so glad to have him with us. Really, it's our honor to have you on the show today, Tony. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Rich, and uh, looking forward to today's conversation. Oh, thanks, man. Now, obviously, in your kind of vantage point as someone who runs really a, a premier church consulting organization, I know you probably don't love that word church consultant, but, you know, as an organization no. that runs that, <laughs> what uh, when you look to the kind of church around you, you know, you've got this great name, Unstuck. Why did you call your group the Unstuck Group? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I for uh, coming out of the great experiences I had, like you said, with a few different great churches, I just assume, boy, if I if I can offer to help churches have stronger, healthier weekend services and volunteer teams and small group ministries and all the things that churches do, I would just have all kinds of churches looking for help. And, you know, I stayed busy in the first couple of years that I'm doing what I'm doing now, but things didn't really take off until I kind of took a, a, a bit of my own medicine. And by that, what I mean is this, all the time I'm encouraging teaching pastors, senior pastors, you have truth to offer people. Yeah. But sometimes before people are willing to hear the truth, you have to kind of meet them where they are. Mm. Um, and another, you have, kind of have to speak to the challenges, the issues that they're facing in their lives before you can offer the next steps, in our case, biblical truth as, as teaching pastors. Well, uh, I, I finally realized I was trying to offer, this is what I do to help churches <laughs> without really paying attention to what are the challenges, the opportunities that churches are facing. And so I just started to listen a little bit more closely to when, when a church contacted me, when a pastor contacted me, contacted me, what were they saying? Mm. And the phrase I heard over and over and over again is, we're stuck, mm. and we're not sure where we're supposed to go next. And so really, though I started the Unstuck group a little over eight years ago, this it, it kind of has evolved to the place now, really, where it comes down to the bottom line, we're trying to help churches get uh, unstuck. Hmm. Now, when you, you know, with all the different churches you um um, work with, is there kind of common places where churches get stuck in their growth? Are there common spots along the journey that you find yourself, you know, talking to them again? Yeah, and actually that's part of the genesis of the Unstuck Church book, Rich, mm -hmm. is there, um, you know, I met in the map, in the book, I map out these seven different seasons of a church. Um, but commonly there are two places where churches get stuck. Mm -hmm. One is, as they're seeing increase, as they're seeing growth and they're moving towards sustained health, there's this place where the church has gone through its launch phase, it's gone through this season of momentum uh, growth, and they get stuck at this place where the church has kind of outgrown itself and that it's gone from being just a personality to more. there are more people gathering and it starts to take strategies and systems um, before, and, and structure, really, mm -hmm. before the church can move forward. And so that's one place that we see the church getting stuck. Uh, the second place is it's kind of um, the church moves from experiencing sustained health to this place where now 
Um, unfortunately, over time, they become a little bit more inward focused. Mm. The, they tend to gravitate more towards what they've always done. Mm. Um, and it, the church begins to move into this maintenance season. And mm. what's the challenge there is uh, many times they don't even know they're in that season. Um, they still think that they're experiencing strong health and growth. And and what's crazy is this maintenance season, the church financially can be the healthiest the church has ever been. Mm -hmm. um, and so that tends to cover some mm -hmm. of the underlying challenges mm -hmm. that the church is facing. And like I say, many times they don't even know that they're encountering those challenges. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so true. I actually, I've, I've said, I've commented in other, com in other contexts that the most dangerous church out there is one that's in decline, where the, the, its impact is in decline. So it's maybe, you know, decreased attendance, decreased, you know, volunteerism, decreased, but actually the money is on the increase. Um, they're that's actually, right. you know, they're actually seeing more money come in every year. Um, and, and that happens. You run into those churches and the, the problem with those is they can become a zombie. You know, they can become mm -hmm. a, you know, it's this walking dead kind of thing. What, let's talk about that church maybe for a little bit that, you know, the church mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's maybe stuck, um, you know, it's, it's not, they're, they're not closing their doors. They're not thinking, Hey, we've got to, you know, pack things up, but they're, they're just kind of plateaued and, and maybe in just a slight decline. What would, are some of the things that maybe the unstuck book could point towards um, helping them think about some next steps? Yeah, well, I, I mentioned one of them already. I mean, one of the key things is these churches, and they don't intentionally do this, but over time, they just tend to get more inward focused. Mm -hmm. And um, so the I think just going back to who is it mm -hmm. that God's called us to reach and just mm -hmm. getting a lot of clarity around that again. And um, of course, you know, my hope would be they, the church would identify as somebody outside the church mm -hmm. and hopefully somebody outside the faith. Mm. And if, if once they get clarity about who that person is, then begin to look at how do we how do we intentionally uh, create services, create ministry environments, create ministry strategies that help us not only reach that person, but help that person begin to take steps mm. toward Christ. And so I think it, it does begin with kind of getting an outward focus. Um, but I'll tell you, the other common issue with churches that get to this place is mm. complexity. Mm. Um, they just, uh, over, over the years, they continue to add on more and more and more good ministry. And the fact is, each one of those ministries probably, at least in a season, were reaching people, helping people take steps in their faith. Um, but when you continue to add on and add on and add on without ever taking anything away and then without ever considering is what we're doing is how we're investing our limited resources, our limited time, our limited leadership, mm. um, is it continuing to have real impact mm. as far as the number of people we're reaching and the steps that we're encouraging people to take in their faith journey. Mm -hmm. When when you don't assess and then prune, um, then over time you're going to end up with a lot of things that you're trying to do, probably not doing any of them very mm -hmm. well. And it just creates complexity, which becomes a drain on the church and mm -hmm. ultimately makes the church a little bit less effective, I think, in reaching people outside the faith and outside the church. So those are kind of two two of the big things we hit in the book when it comes to churches that have found themselves in that maintenance season, Rich. All right, I'm going to push you a little bit on the first one. I okay. know that, um, you know, as a lot of church leaders say, listen, of course I'm outward focused. The reason why I got into ministry was to reach people far from Christ. This is this is why I've given my life to this whole thing. This is why I'm not a car salesman. This is what I've what I've done. What are some of the kind of telltale signs from your perspective of a church that may think they're outward focused, but they're really not? And so that's one part one. And then part two, what would you say are a few maybe um, first steps you would suggest to a church to kind of start taking that step? Are there, you know, are there things that even with their leaders, you could say, hey, well, you know, maybe we should try this or try that? Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty easy to tell because you can look at three big investments that churches make. Yep. Uh, investment in their time, mm -hmm. in their space, mm -hmm. and in uh, just uh, financially the investment mm -hmm. they're making. Mm -hmm. And you just, uh, each of those assess, let's just look at the percentage of time 
that we're giving to helping people that are currently connected to the church mm. take their next steps toward Christ. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at the percentage of time that we're investing to reach people outside the church and outside mm -hmm. the faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, one simple exercise I'll have churches do, Rich, is mm -hmm. list out everything that they do as a church, every mm -hmm. service, every ministry, every <laughs> event that they offer. And then I'll invite the leadership just to put a check in, the, in, in, in one of two columns. Is this ministry, event, or service primarily for the person who's already in our church? Mm. Or is this intended to reach people outside the faith and outside the church? Mm. And as you can imagine, in most cases, where their time is really going is toward the person that's already convinced that Jesus is Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, they're already convinced that he's their Lord and Savior. It's for the person that's inside the church already. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that it should be a 50-50 <laughs> split. Right. I don't agree that our all it all should go towards the person outside the church, but mm -hmm. there needs to be a better balance in our ministries toward reaching the person outside the faith and helping people who are already connected to the church take their next steps toward Christ. There needs to be a healthier balance there because over time, our natural... I just heard Andy Stanley mm -hmm. talk about it this week. He said mm -hmm. the natural gravitational pull is for the church to give focus to the person who's already connected mm -hmm. to the ministry. So true, so true. What about on the complexity side? Are there um, maybe low-hanging fruit complexity that, um, you know, church leaders that are listening in today, you're like, because I think we all have those things in our, our church that if we're completely honest, we're like, gosh, I'm not sure how we're going to get out of that. It's going to take some time, but there's probably things that are just low hanging that we could just like, Hey, we could cut these three things and it would make no difference. Are there things you see yeah. from your kind of outsider perspective that you'd be like, Hey, you should just get rid of that. So there, it, it's tough to do this without a whiteboard. So maybe yeah. you can include this graphic sure. um, on your show notes, mm -hmm. but um, through the through the Patterson process that we use, mm -hmm. uh, we create this. It's it's kind of a this four box matrix, and it's considering two factors. On the top of the chart is the opportunity for life change that exists with everything that we do, mm -hmm. and on the left side of the chart, it's the investment, it's the risk that's included, and in that risk, it's risk financially, space time, leadership, communications, um, just losing focus. There's a risk associated with that. Mm -hmm. And again, we ask churches to plot in this chart, in these four boxes, where are you? Is it high opportunity for life change mm -hmm. and high risk? Mm -hmm. Is it high opportunity for life change, but lower risk associated with it? Mm -hmm. um, the key though, for this conversation on complexity mm -hmm. is to look at the things that end up on the left side of this chart mm -hmm. that are gonna offer lower opportunity for life change. It doesn't mean that there's no life change happening. Mm -hmm. It just means when it comes to new people receiving Christ and, mm -hmm. and then people taking steps toward faith, it's just not happening as often. Mm -hmm. And in some of those instances, there's a high investment that's taking mm. to pull off this ministry that's not producing much life change. And we call that foolish. Mm. And the, <laughs> The thing right. is, when it when it lands there, churches tend to push the stop button pretty quickly right. because they're not seeing a lot of life change, but they're investing a lot of resources to pull it off. And so they'll stop doing it. The dangerous place to be in this exercise mm. is in the lower left box. This mm. is the place where there's little life change happening but it doesn't require a big investment. There's not a lot of risk. Mm -hmm. And so for churches that get complex, particularly on the right side of this life cycle where they've started to experience some decline in their impact, um, they end up with quite a few things in this lower left quadrant. Mm -hmm. And um, in the Patterson process, they call the security. I take a little bit more, uh, I call it, it's a little bit more blunt for me. <laughs> I call these the sacred cows mm, in yes. churches. And I've actually been in India, and the cows are sacred there. Right. Um, but here, it's more figurative. Um, but here, if we end up with too many sacred cows, it can create a real drain on mm. resources and pull away from the things that, as churches, we could be doing to reach more people for Jesus. Mm. And so, 
with sacred cows, you have two choices. You can either kill the cow or you can starve the cow. Now, Rich, um, just so you know, uh, I love cows. Okay, But again, we're not talking about literal cows. These are sacred cows. Save your emails. Don't email Tony. Don't email That's me. That's right. That's right. Um, so we either need to stop these ministries or we need to starve these ministries. In other words, we don't give them more platform time. We don't give them financial resources. We don't give them staff resources leadership focus eventually these these ministries it's tough but they need to fade away so that we can we're, we every church has limited resources and because of that we have to steward those limited resources well and the objective then is we need to over time stop doing some things that aren't producing much fruit we need to prune which is a biblical principle by the way mm-hmm. so that we can experience more fruit in the things that really have the potential to produce life change. Uh, So uh, that's, that's kind of my quick take uh, rich and hopefully that graphic uh, on your show notes will help. Yeah, we'll get that in there for sure. Now, is it true that you've got an online assessment tool that you've put together for the book? Cause I, a part of what I was thinking is I think there's folks that are listening in that are like, Oh man, first of all, I want to get the book, but then where am I on this whole, you know, chart that you're talking about? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, there to help, like I said, this life cycle of the church that we cover in the book hits th- uh, seven different phases, and we wanted to make it easy as possible for churches to identify what season are we in as a church. And so uh, the assessment, the unstuck church assessment, it's on the website. It's free. Mm-hmm. We'll share the link with you so that you can uh, your listeners can go through the assessment. And here's the great thing about that assessment: you can just do it on your own. If you're a pastor or a leader at the church, or better yet, you can invite your team to do it, and it's free for everybody, so your whole team can do this for free, and actually, you're going to get better results with more perspective you include in this assessment, Mm -hmm. but here's the good thing. You'll, You'll take the assessment, you'll identify where on the life cycle your church is, and then we'll give you a few steps that you can take coming out of that assessment online, mm-hmm. but it'll give a lot more weight than to what you're reading in the book, because as a team, you'll be able to take a look at the next steps that we offer with, with each of these seven seasons of the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully we'll give you a lot of focus about what you can be doing next as a ministry mm-hmm. to help you move towards sustained health. Very cool. Well, why don't you tell us about the book? Give us a, you know, why did you write it? Obviously, you've given us a good a good overview. Um, but this, you know, in some ways, got to be honest, I feel like you're giving away your whole business here. You're like, <laughs> you're, you're talking about the whole thing. Uh, yeah. But, you know, give us a sense of, you know, why did you why did you write it? And, and what are you hoping people get out of it? Obviously, it's what we've been talking about, but just give us a little more detail. Yeah, well, the, the why is this? Um, it's because it really is because Jesus changed my life, Rich. Mm, mm. Um, and so I know what my life was like before Christ. Um, I, I was a sinner without forgiveness. I didn't have purpose for my life. Uh, I didn't have hope for my future. Um, I, I didn't. I mean, my parents loved me. I loved my parents, but there was a sense that I was not good enough mm. for God. And Jesus, Jesus paid the price for me. Mm. And so I, I know for me what He did for me. And ultimately, I believe it's the local church that's his plan for helping other people like me experience a relationship with Christ, take steps in their faith, find forgiveness, find hope, find purpose for their lives. I I believe it's the local church. That's God's design for seeing this mission get carried out. And so that that's really why I wrote the book, (laughs) because I I want churches, I want, and I, I, I don't deny this, I want churches help to be healthy, mm-hmm. and I want healthy churches to grow, mm-hmm. because I figure as, as health, churches get healthy, and as churches grow, more people get to experience the relationship with Jesus that I experienced. Cool. And so you're right, uh, I'm kind of giving it all away. <laughs> <laughs> but I figure if I do that, more churches will take advantage of it. More totally. churches will get healthy, and ulti- ultimately, more people will have what I have, um, which uh, I, I, I just that's I, I've given my life to that, Rich. Yeah, fantastic. Well, you know, I, I often don't have a lot of authors on, and um, but I would highly recommend that folks uh, pick this book up, the un 
Uh, it's just called The Unstuck Church. You can get it at, uh, I'm assuming, Amazon, you know, everywhere fine books are sold. We'll have links in the show notes about it. Uh, or you can follow, you know, f- get, pick it up uh, from Tony's, you know, on Tony's profiles and all that. But I really would encourage you to pick it up. It's one of these books, you know, I would get, grab a copy of it, read it through the summer with your team. It would be a great kind of summer, um, you know, book to read through and really, really think about the fall and think, hey, maybe we need to be thinking differently about church even as we relaunch. Because um, there is that kind of natural shift here that happens. Uh, in in church uh, life, is there anything else you want to say before we kind of change gears here, Tony? Yeah, no. the The only thing I would say is um, I'm I've been praying for my myself for this, mm. and I'm praying as churches engage this book um, that God will interrupt them, mm. because I think as uh, as Christ followers and the church, I think we need to be interrupted, mm. and when we do that, I think it's going to cause us to pause and just kind of assess where are we, Mm -hmm. where does God want us to go in the future, and then hopefully we'll create an intentional plan of next steps to to get to the place in our own spiritual journey, but also as churches where we're really living out God's design Mm -hmm. uh, for our ministry. So that's what I'm, I'm praying for is that we'll all experience an interruption. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, we're going to jump into the lightning round, that part of the episode where we ask similar questions of everybody that's on the sh- on the show. Uh, super excited to have Tony Morgan with us today. He's a uh, really a thought leader, someone you're going to want to follow if you're not already. Um, and just been excited to be talking about his uh, his book today. Well, why don't we jump in? What is an online resource that you're using these days, Tony? That's helping you in what you do. Yeah, it probably won't surprise you. I am so I'm such a guy focused on action. Yes. Uh, that um, the the thing that I can highlight here, uh, the solution is Asana, mm-hmm. A S A N A, which our team our team is remote, completely remote. There are 20 of us working all across the world, really, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the tool that keeps all of us focused on the projects and tasks that we're working on, and really helps with collaboration. So Asana. Nice. Very good. What's a book you've read in the last six months uh, to a year that's shaping your thinking or ministry, which is dangerous for someone who just finished a book because I know you <laughs> you're mostly trying to dig through and get your own thing done. But what's something you've been yeah. reading recently? No. Uh, so a couple of things here. I'm uh, Four Disciplines of Execution mm-hmm. to continue with the theme of yep. Let's not just have a vision. Let's actually get the vision accomplished. So that's been a game changer for me. Uh, but then I also like reading presidential biographies, oh, okay. and I just I just finished um, uh, Andrew Jackson's biography. Nice. And uh, it would, uh, considering the current times that we're in, <laughs> probably helped you to go back and read Andrew Jackson. Nice. And a non-political statement. Just it's an interesting, right. just an interesting read. <laughs> yes. Now this question, uh, I was actually I was thinking when you were, earlier today, I was like, oh, I'm interested to hear what Tony's saying about another ministry that inspires you. You get a chance to see a lot of churches. Well, who's inspiring you these days? Yeah. So because of that, and it's been it's been a lot of. In fact, a couple months ago, we celebrated being in our 200th church. So on the ground with over 200 churches now, and one of the churches that we got to connect with in the last year. Uh, was Rock Point Church in Leander, Texas, just outside of Austin, and it's a it's just a fabulous ministry. They just went multi-site mm-hmm. uh, earlier this year. They've made some significant changes in the last last twelve months about how they're doing student ministry, mm-hmm. and um, it's got there's just a lot of fruit that's coming out of their church, and so. Uh, uh, just just swarm their website and try to learn everything you can from them. Rock Point Church in Leander, Texas. Very cool. Uh, if you could get 15 minutes with any leader alive, who would that be with and why? That's easy. Elon Musk. Oh, who, nice. Uh, gosh, I uh, I'm I'm not. I don't think I'm a futurist, but I'm definitely got some of that entrepreneurial thing into me. Mm-hmm. I love creativity and innovation. I don't think there's anybody. Uh, pushing innovation as much as he is right now. And I'm just curious to see how he does that. Absolutely. It's amazing. All right. Well, I'm sure, you know, trying to serve 200 churches, trying to write books, it seems like you're always coming out with something new. It takes a lot of pressure in life. What do you do when you just want to kind of kick back, relax, have some fun? Well, mainly I want to hang out with my wife, Emily. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when she's tired of me, uh, (laughs) I, I, I play the piano, Rich. Really? 
Yeah, just for myself though. I, uh, I that I was my next question. Else. Yeah. When is the Tony no. Morgan album coming out? No, and here <laughs> uh, just uh, just a couple weeks ago, I got to go to a Billy Joel concert oh, for the nice. first time, and that's he's my hero. Yeah. So uh, when I want to relax, I'll turn on a Billy Joel album and play along with him. Very cool. Well, I appreciate being on the show today, Tony. Uh, if people want to get in touch with the Unstuck Group or with the book and all that, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, we make it pretty easy. It's simple. It's theunstuckgroup.com. And you can figure out all the details from there. Great. Thanks so much, Tony. Appreciate being on the show today. Thanks, Rich. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary.